Hello, Mark. It's a pleasure to see you on Zoom, although I'd much rather be in person with you uh, in Austin at the ATX Festival. Hello, Michael Rausch. I am so thrilled to just have an excuse to hang out with you. And I love that ATX Festival. We had so many good times there with Royal Pains and even since then. And it's such a great festival. And I wish we could all be in Austin together, but this is the next best thing. And I'm so happy to get to talk to you. I believe Royal Pains was the first television show to ever screen at the ATX Festival. That's and right. If I'm wrong, hopefully they won't correct me. Um, so we'll just go with it is. Okay. Um, yeah. And speaking of Royal Pains, um, I thought that, uh, that we could start talking about basically because we've known each other for a long time as friends before the show came about. Um, and, and our working together in a way wasn't about our friendship or wasn't about us saying let's do a show together or since I wasn't even a part of the pilot. Um, the show that Andrew Lancheski created and that you starred in, the pilot, uh, was its own thing before I even kind of joined the family. So um, maybe talking a little bit about, about what it was like for you, um, who predated me on the show, uh, for us working together for the first time and, and kind of being lucky enough to come on board and be a part of, of uh, Royal Pants. We had hung out a bunch at our uh, mutual friend's house in LA because um, we were all just starting out together and you were making amazing independent films and, um, and making TV shows. And then we made the pilot of Royal Pains and then they were figuring out an, uh, an older brother, Papa Bear for Andrew Lancheski who had created the pilot. And I'm on the phone with you at Burbank Airport, I'll never forget it. And Michael Rausch is up for the job to run the show that I am getting to do. And I, you were only the greatest top choice any show could ever hope to have. And all I kept doing was saying, it's gonna be great, you gotta do it, Rausch, you gotta do it. And lo and behold, your life and schedule at that time worked out so that you accepted the job. And I remember you telling me you were on conferences with Jeff Wachtel and you were thinking about it and it felt pretty good. And then boom, you're our showrunner. And then we were on set together and it very quickly felt like a match made in heaven. I mean, it didn't take any adjustment time. You're just the greatest and I love you like a brother. And instantly we had that rapport and I'm just gonna go right to the moment when it all came together for us, season one, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, you know, working together that first month, um, season one, and feeling out all the different personalities and directors, but you were just so calming and so in charge. And we shot those first few episodes and then we started going on the air and, you and I both had a history of failed TV shows. I mean, it's I've had- a very shows. nice way of putting it, but yes. <laughs> yes, I mean, great shows, some great, yours better than mine. <laughs> they lasted whatever it was, half a season, a season, a season- Three episodes. What? Three episodes, one of mine. I, you, you two? We both yeah. had, three, I had, I had three pounds, lasted three episodes oh. on the air and out. Also CBS, I had Love Monkey, three episodes, and then they moved us to VH1, which was, the best. They're always always <laughs> the direction you want to go in, yeah. <laughs> Going for the scripted uh, television. We had just aired our fourth episode, and every week we had grown, which was historically, I think, something shows had never done, to grow every week in your first four weeks on the air. And I remember waiting for those ratings on that fourth episode on the air. We were at a barn in Queens. Yeah, that farm in Queens, yeah. Yeah. And you shared with me that our ratings were, again, awesome. That we were like neck and neck with Burn Notice, which was an established hit. So we knew at that moment that we were no longer living the life of our other shows that had not gone the distance. That we might, or pretty much were guaranteed to get a season two. And we just high-fived and hugged behind that barn. And I'll never forget it, because that's a moment only you and I could share 
having been in the trenches, we were not some innocent 25 year old kid who everything came to right away. We had been through battle and here we were. And I, it was the greatest. I, I love that memory. I remember that moment and I love that it existed in the like backdraft of animal manure. You know, we're <laughs> on the, the, it was as unglamorous as it could possibly be. It was hot. We were both yep. sweating. We were standing in dirt and- It was actually it, not one of our best episodes. We were in the middle of shooting with the cartoonist. It was yeah. fine. It was great. Everybody was great in it, but- But that moment and, and absolutely the, the recognition, the realization for us that this was gonna go on and have some longevity and how meaningful that was. Yes. Uh, so, so on Royal Pains, you were number one in the call sheet, which uh, is an incredible responsibility. Uh, an honor. You obviously worked very hard to get there. As someone who runs a show, number one in a way is is uh, transcendentally important because if they're not professional, if they're not on time, if they're not a good person, if they're not respectful, if they're not kind, they're basically giving permission to everyone else to act out in some way. And and you know our show was successful in a lot of ways, but probably the part that we're almost proud of was the family we created of the crew and the writers and the guest stars and the cast um, and the directors and and how it was just a great place to be and a family that respect and love each other and so much of that was because of the tone you set by working as hard as you did and how humble you are how talented and funny and you would buy you know great croissants for the crew and have your Ben and Jerry ice cream carts and stuff like that and and so, um, but another another uh, privilege that number ones get, and and it's a long way to get around to this question is, um, at the end of every season, um, you know, just for the people who who aren't a part of TV shows, what percentage of of your wardrobe do you borrow and take home? <laughs> that was an amazing tribute, followed by an hysterical question. I love you. So much. I just, just to let the public know, just out yeah. of, I mean, yeah. it wouldn't be like garbage bags full of clothes that, oh. that you're just the last day you're walking home with, right? Oh, a pair of Hanes. Yeah, oh, okay. Pair of underwear. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for everything you said. I just, I, I don't, I, I know we have to keep in check the mutual admiration society because it will get nauseous. I don't admire anymore. you that much. Okay, so. You do, you do, think about me every night. But uh, I couldn't be everything that you say I was without you. You took, you were our Papa Bear. You were the adult in the room every day of that show. And you dealt with all the hard questions and all the hard conversations, which freed me up to have fun every day and be a pig in shit. And, it's all because you were so good at what you did. Writing, directing, show running, managing people, every aspect of that job where you have to be a Renaissance man, you knocked out of the park. So I won't take it without giving it right back to you. And okay. as far as wardrobe, wardrobe goes, uh, yeah, gar garbage bags. <laughs> What's amazing Gar is, that, is that I kind of knew the answer to the question um, and, and both for budget reasons, but also just as, as a, you know, a curious person, you borrowed a significant amount of incredibly beautiful clothing that Caroline Duncan, our wardrobe, you know, so, so talented, um, found for your character that was tailored to fit you perfectly. And yet I've only ever seen you in the same t-shirt and shorts. So that's, did that's you sell it? Point. Did you give it away? What, like... What eBay, you, eBay, is, eBay is an amazing <laughs> website. Uh, I now have my own eBay channel. Uh, <laughs> we, got, um, we got Schmatas flying in, flying out. I love you. I love talking to you. I only wish we could do this together on stage next year in Austin, as we Jews say. Um, and uh, and. I, I miss you, I miss the festival, I miss Emily and Caitlin, I miss everyone who shows up and loves this festival and loves TV, loves to make it, loves to watch it. 
And, uh, and so this is the taste for, for June for us this year, but, but I'm really glad uh, I got to do it. And I, I will say that that would be heaven. I would do it in a heartbeat. I'd make a date. I'm there next year. Would, would love to talk to you, Roushi and Emily, um, anytime. But again, the feeling of Kumbaya on the set of Royal Pains is also the feeling of the ATX Festival. And we would say elegantly it trickles down from the top, or as a teamster might say it, the fish smells from the head. <laughs> and the heads of the ATX Festival are just the best. And uh, we're so, I'm so grateful to be uh, a part of it and to have done this with you today, Rashi. See you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Thanks. Emily, Caitlin. Okay. All right. Bye bye.